So there's more than a few ways to approach the melee tech and the melee strong gang in the early stages of the Cyberpunk 2077 main story. As a matter of fact, depending on your early on choices, many of the options later on in the game can completely change and this can go to more than just the characters and the overall story outcome and also to the types of rewards that you can get. And in this video we are going to explore all of the possibilities as well as the secret hidden dialogues and even more so go over the best routes possible that you will definitely want to go over if you want to get the best possible rewards. So if you enjoyed this video at any point it would be super awesome if you left a like on it and let's jump right into it. Now the first possible outcome and probably the most straightforward was also a kind of curiosity of mine. I really wanted to see what happens with the mission if you never come in contact with the Militech agents and even more so with Meredith Stout before starting the pickup mission. So instead of doing that I directly went over in front of Whole Foods where Jackie was waiting for me and from this point on I just continued with the mission the regular old way. And surprisingly enough there are changes both along the way and at the end of this mission. Now the immediate outcome is the fact that you can no longer use that Militech chip as a form of payment since you never received it in the first place. But what you can use is your own stash of money, assuming that you gathered 10,000 eddies prior to this point, to pay for the flatbot. This is probably going to be the most peaceful outcome out of the pickup mission because it completely avoids all wars on all ends, including with the Militech that never gets to invade the Whole Foods anymore and with the Maelstroms that now accept your payment. As a result, you also get a completely different mission ending, which is basically you getting escorted by Dum Dum by using the same elevator you used in the beginning of the mission. And this is also going to bring you through a shortcut through the facility all the way up until the back. As I've said, because you never get to get in contact with the Militech, they also don't get to wait for you at the end. Case in which you're going to get a completely different dialogue with Jackie at the end of Whole Foods. Ah, I love this town. A city of endless opportunity and brotherly hate. But if you got the cojones and you know how to use them, you can do damn near anything. By the way, you get pretty much the same ending even if you did go to war against Royce and even killed him. The only difference is that in this scenario, you also get to pick up his items and his iconic pistol. But you also don't get to open up the other side missions like for example the one with Meredith Stout. So I would say that out of all of the possibilities, this is going to be the least rewarding one. So I would probably avoid it entirely. Now in the second type of outcome, this is the one that's probably most common. It's the one where you do get to contact the Militech right before the pickup mission and receive that Militech chip from Meredith Stout. Now depending if you choose to go with Meredith's plan or not, this is going to completely change not only the outcome of this mission, the characters that you will encounter later down the line, a few other side missions and even more so a very important and powerful weapon that you can completely miss depending on your choices and this one is something that you can get much later in the main story campaign right towards the end. So so let's begin with the option that gives you the most amount of rewards, not necessarily the most powerful, but also the ones that are most immediate, and that is by simply following Meredith's plan. You can do all of this in two ways, either by taking care of Royce by yourself, by just killing him in the encounter, this is going to give you the fastest um, access to his loot, and also avoiding him as an end boss at the end of the pickup, or by the second option, providing the spiked chip, case in which you will fry the Maelstrom Netron but um, Royce will be able to escape at the end of the Whole Foods where he will be in an end boss encounter. In either of these situations, once you dealt with the Maelstroms, you will be greeted by Meredith and the other, well, Militech at the end of the Whole Foods, case in which you will follow with the dialogue the regular old way. But this is also the only outcome in which you can get Meredith as a recurring character in Act 2 and not just that, also as a romanceable option. So immediately after Act 2, you can go ahead and message Meredith as she is now one of your contacts and she will set up a meeting at the Notel Motel. Now for obvious reasons I cannot show you the interaction right here but rest assured that you get to explore Meredith's character in more than a few interesting ways. At the end of the Venus in first mission you also get a very interesting iconic weapon that I will argue is one of the best early on melee weapons in Cyberpunk 2077. It can two shot even one shot enemies on the hardest difficulty even with a completely 
well broken and useless build and it's a pretty fun one to have entirely. Again, this outcome right here is probably the best if you want the most amount of items immediately after this mission because you get both the ones from Royce as well as the ones from Meredith in Act 2. But you get to be completely locked out out of a more powerful item that comes much later in the main story during another side mission called, um, of course, the Second Conflict. We will talk about that in just a little bit, but this brings us to the second option, and that is to actually betray Meredith and side with the Maelstrom. In this case, you do it either by hacking the chip, which gives you the option to inform the Maelstroms about the fact that the melee attack is onto them, or simply straight up pay Royce out of your own pocket, which in turn is going to bring you the same outcome, where Meredith orders the strike on the facility and you have to make your way out of it by killing all of the invading Militech. At the end of it, in this case, you're going to get greeted by Anthony, which was previously kidnapped by Meredith, and yeah, he informs you about the outcome and, well, from this point on, you don't really get the interaction with her since she ends up dead. Um, here's a few other possible outcomes and secrets during this mission that I really want to talk about. Again, first one, depending on who you chose to side with, the other character is going to end up dead. So if you chose to side with Meredith, you're going to find Anthony's dead body really close to where you um, did meet the Militech under that bridge in Kabuki, and there's going to be a pretty interesting interaction with Johnny right here. Year. Had it coming, I guess. Who is that? Friend of yours? Corporal Rat. Schemer. Had some dealings with him. Long past. If instead of that you chose to betray Meredith, she is going to be the one that ends up dead and you are going to find her body right here in the northern part of the map right next to this bridge area. And here is of course the interaction with Johnny again. Militech don't forgive. Militech don't forget. Acquaintance of yours? Yep. Familiar face from my past life. The second secret is the fact that you can choose to save the former Maelstrom gang leader, Brick, which was actually the one that you initially paid for the flatbot, but Royce chose to betray him. So if you do that, you're going to find him in the second big room where you get to fight with either the Militech or the Maelstrom, depending on your previous choice. But in any of these options, you can go and rescue um, Brick in all of these situations. You just need the code, which is going to be right here in the room on to the right side of that one or simply inputting the code that you see right here on the screen. If you do that, you're going to be able to disarm the trap, and he is going to be the one that takes over the gang, even if you did let Royce live prior to this. If you do choose to do that, this is also going to completely change the outcome of the second conflict side mission much later in the main story, and this can either make it much harder or much easier depending on your choices right here. So I will talk about that in just a little bit. The final secret outcome is is going to be the one where you get to find the identity of the actual mole, which was the one that lost the transport for Meredith in the first place. But unfortunately, this is only an option for the Nomad playthrough, since only as a Nomad does V get to know how these things kind of work. So in the very first room where you fight with the enemies as you plan your escape from the Whole Foods, you're going to see that there's actually an access to a second smaller room right north to it. So if you go in this server room right Right here, you're going to be able to access this terminal and one of these messages is going to talk about a transport that has been lost along the way. And again, only as a nomad do you know what a LOA actually means. And if you finish the mission by siding with Meredith, at the end of it, you do get the option to actually inform her that Anthony Gilcrest was the mole all along and she is going to take the necessary precautions as well as give you additional rewards in Act 2, all deliverable to your apartment. Fine, but maybe you'd be interested in the identity of your mole, how they put it all together. Okay, talk. Your problem's on the state line. Cargo manifests were stamped LOA. Merch was then lost just after it crossed the border. Inside job by a man you know, Anthony Gilchrist. Wow, I see I'm working with a professional. You won't regret this. This is going to be seriously rewarding for you count on it. 
And this brings us to the best possible outcome, at least when it comes to getting the best possible iconic weapon in the game, which is none other than the Doom Doom Iconic Pistol. It's the best pistol in the game, it's one of the best weapons in the game entirely, and it just deals insane amounts of damage with the proper build and modding setup. So in order to get this, all you have to keep in mind is this, you first A, need to make sure that Royce lives at the end of the pickup mission, as well as Dum Dum, since he is going to be the one that actually drops this, um, you're going to want to not side with the Militech and instead um, betray Meredith Stout and finally not save Brick because otherwise he is going to replace Royce and also replace Dum Dum with Patricia, at least it did in my playthrough. And if you do that during the second conflict side job that you get towards the end of the main campaign, you will be able to interact with these characters once more and in the Totem Tense Club is where you you can go ahead, kill Dum Dum, and he is going to provide you, well, in this case, drop the Doom Doom pistol, which again is one of the best weapons in the game, especially if you go with a stealth silencer kind of build that absolutely makes this insane. And yeah, this is it with all of the best possible outcomes from the Middlestrom hideout mission. Of course, let me know down below if there are different ones that you discovered. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, as always, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.